Let's take a closer look at the humoral immunity provided by the B lymphocytes. When we consider B cell development, it's actually very similar to what we saw with T cell development. B cells begin in the bone marrow, but they don't migrate anywhere else. They're gonna divide there in the bone marrow during development to make a whole lot of B cells. Each of those B cells in the bone marrow then develops its own unique randomly generated antibody that it shows on the surface of its cell. This is really similar to the unique randomly generated receptors produced by the T cells. Only with B cells, there are antibodies. These antibodies have the ability to bind to specific antigens on a pathogen. Because the B cells make these randomly, we can make antibodies that have the ability to bind to any sort of antigen, which unfortunately includes self-antigens. So just like we saw with the T cells, B cells need to be tested. B cells go through a testing stage to make sure that their antibodies do not bind to self antigens. If they do, the B cell is destroyed. The B cells that pass the test, the ones with antibodies that don't bind to our own antigens, then divide to make many more copies of B cells with that particular antibody and they migrate out into the body and go to the various lymphatic tissues and lymphatic organs, similar to what we saw from the T cells. At this point, the B cells are immunocompetent, which means they're ready to respond, but they're naive, meaning they're not activated yet. So they're not actually gonna fight pathogens. We have to activate a B cell before it can fight a pathogen. In order to be activated, the B cells wait until they bump into the pathogen that has the antigens that their antibodies bind to. When the B cell binds to the pathogen, it engulfs or phagocytizes the pathogen, breaks it down into little pieces, and displays the pathogen antigens on its surface. We talked about this before, that B lymphocytes can be antigen-presenting cells. This B cell is still not active. The B cell is showing its pathogen antigen, but it has to wander about until it bumps into a helper T cell. It needs to find a helper T cell with a receptor that matches its pathogen antigen. When it finds that, they bind, and the helper T cell releases cytokines that activate the B cell. Once the B cell is activated, it divides to make a whole army of B cells that recognize that particular pathogen. Most of these B cells then become special cells called plasma cells. Plasma cells are like antibody factories. These activated B cells that we call plasma cells produce tons of antibodies and dump them out into the body's fluids. So these antibodies are now circulating through the lymph and through the tissue fluid and through the blood. The antibodies are what are responsible for actually binding to the pathogens and neutralizing them. That's why B cells are so good at fighting pathogens that are found in the humors, in the body fluids, not inside of cells. When an antibody finds the pathogen that it matches, it binds to that pathogen and neutralizes it. Antibodies can neutralize pathogens through a couple of different mechanisms. Um, sometimes the antibody uses what's called neutralization where the antibody just binds to the dangerous part of the pathogen, and then the pathogen's not dangerous anymore, sort of like putting a muzzle on a dog. The dog's still alive, but the dog's not dangerous anymore. A second mechanism by which antibodies help fight pathogens is that antibodies activate complement. When an antibody binds to its pathogen, that binding activates complement, which we talked about as a nonspecific mechanism. Activated complement helps the immune response in several different ways. It makes it easier to phagocytize pathogens, it increases inflammation, and complement proteins can make a hole in the pathogen membrane itself uh, and destroy the pathogen through the process of cytolysis. A third way antibodies can neutralize pathogens is by agglutination. Now we saw agglutination before when we were looking at blood typing. If you added antibodies that could bind to the antigens on the blood, it caused the blood to clump up. Now when things clump up like that, they can't function very well anymore. When pathogens are clumped up or agglutinated by antibodies, 
then the pathogens can't function anymore either. Once the pathogen has been destroyed, we reduce the number of B cells. So most of the B cells die when the pathogen is gone, but a few of them remain as long-lasting memory B cells. And we need memory B cells for the same reason we need memory T cells. These memory B cells are activated cells that give us a quicker immune system response if we ever see that pathogen again.